Now, I haven't said that. Let me ask you to um, open your Bibles or your smartphones uh, to the book of Lamentations, to the book of Lamentations. And what I shared with you regarding Sister Della is a good segue into what I want to talk to us today about. Uh, Brother Dwayne and his family, they're going through uh, the transition of the loss of loved ones um, of church and members of uh, John Traham's family uh, are going through uh, the same emotional uh, changes that you do have to deal with uh, when there is death. Whether it's a young person or an elderly person, it has uh, impact upon us. And the book of Lamentations, I'll, uh, chapter 2, in Lamentations chapter 2. I want to talk from this subject, the faithfulness of God. The faithfulness of God. This is our third uh, sermon in a series of sermons that we have talked to you and came to you on regarding God. Uh, we uh, are led by the Spirit to share with us share with you uh, these series of sermons that God uh, is sovereign, uh, that God alone uh, dispenses and gives and shows us mercy. And today we want to talk about his faithfulness. Uh, now, I'm not sure that all of you can see this um, little table here in front of me, but on that table is a bowl of salt. It's a bowl of salt. And that bowl of salt has been sitting there all week long. I actually, last Sunday after we had uh, finished service and taking care of our business, if she would find a small bowl on the table and to place salt in it and leave it there. Yeah. I, I gave uh, another uh, directive. I said, put a note on it. Put a note on it. Uh, do not touch and do not move. Do not touch and do not move. We had contractors uh, in uh, the first part of the week doing work and uh, they were in and around where the salt was placed they didn't touch it, and they did not move it. Uh, we had uh, one of our ministries, I think, was here uh, practicing uh, either Wednesday or Thursday night, and I got a call uh, from their director, Sister Balkin. And her voice was pitched high, Trotman. She said, we have to practice for our dance presentation that's coming up either this month or next month. And what is this bowl of salt doing on the stage? There's a note that says, don't move it. I said, I had Charlene to put it there. Reverend, we need to stay to practice. And Cheryl, I almost got into a debate with all this room back here. I said, 
walking. Uh, if you need to move it, move it and then put it back. And they, they came yesterday, I'm assuming, and they had a um, rehearsal and set up. And the bowl of salt is still in the bowl. Now, I said all that to say this. I want to talk about the faithfulness of God. That bowl of salt has been exposed uh -huh. to elements, to people, and at least one person had to move it. <laughs> at least one. Some other people might have came in and moved it and didn't tell me, but at least one I do. Appreciate you telling me. But you know what is unique about that? That whether it was moved or not, it has remained at what it is so. And it is salt not because it's white. Because some sugar is white, flour is white, and some acids are white. It is salt because it is salty. And look, now think about it now. It's been exposed all week. Low, open, not not covered by plastic, not covered by a top or aluminum foil, exposed. And if you don't believe me, on your way out, if you want to uh, check it out to see if it's salty, uh, put a little moisture on your hands and dip it in there and taste it. it that's up to you. If you don't believe me, I'm not saying you have to. But my point I'm making that it is faithful. It is faithful. It has been handled at least by one person. It has been exposed, but it has not changed its makeup. Ain't that good news when we think in terms of God that God does not change on us. Now, the book of Lamentations, the book of Lamentations, and most of us don't uh, do much reading and studying in Lamentation, but it's a very critical uh, book uh, that you might ought to read because I guarantee you that all of us, at one time or another, and if not so right now, are feeling or having the emotions behind the backdrop of what the prophet writes about in Lamentations. To put it in short, the book of Lamentations, Lament, its original meaning is to cry out. To cry out in pain, to cry out in misery, to cry out in regret, to cry out in anxiety, to cry out in not knowing if or how you're going to get out of the mess and the trouble that you got yourself in. Yeah, wave your hand. Just wave your hand. I know you don't. I want to uh, shout out too much on that last part because uh, you know you don't want the personal side of you to look at you with with uh, critical eyes. Cry out because of the mess, the trouble, the anxiety, the depression. The embarrassment, uh, the suffering that you brought on 
yourself. Can't blame your neighbor. Can't blame your spouse or the person that you are spending time with. You can't blame your boss. You, you can't even blame Mr. Bobo. Y'all know who Mr. Bobo is. Captain, don't I have to be politically sensitive? Not correct. Uh, the, the stuff that you do to yourself, that you cry out. You don't verbally cry out, but in your soul you cry out. And if you're alone, you may cry. And what I want to do, let me read uh, uh, verses that you did not read and then come down to the preaching text and uh, uh, try to wrap up this idea of the faithfulness of God. They're in trouble. Israel is in uh, captivity, and they are in captivity because they have not done what God had instructed them to do. And you and I experience emotional, social, spiritual, and financial bondage because we have not and do not do what God has instructed us to do. Look at uh, chapter 3. Look at this. this is now. Let me out. Let me let me slow down. This is the prophet of God whom God has called who has prophesied long before they went into bondage that God was going to do to them what is happening to them at that current time. Whew. Anybody remember those of us who, who are older? Remember your mama told you not to do something? Daddy told you not to do something? And you did it? And they warned you that if you did or do this, such and such was going to happen and it wasn't going to be good. That's the best way Gracie I can put it. Listen, listen at the prophet. Listen at the prophet as he, as he reveals how he is feeling which is a mirror of how the nation is feeling. Look at verse 1. I am the man who has seen, and I'm going to try not to be long, but the Super Bowl don't start the 6.30. So if I'm a little longer than you think I ought to be, uh, you, you, you'll get home in time to watch it. And let me, let, let me digress just a minute and say this to you. Most of you know that are here, I arrived very late today. And I arrived late because I did something yesterday that I do not do uh, on Saturdays. Normally I am home and I am chill, relaxed, and taking it easy. But I've been home alone for four days and I was tired of the house, Trotman. So I went out and played golf late yesterday afternoon. And I paid for it this morning because I was late. Uh, and let me say this to you. You've heard me say this before. Uh, what you do, especially on Saturdays, shape your Sunday morning. And so cut it off early. Right? That's going to be my last round of golf on Saturday. Uh, yeah. Now that's it. I, that ain't happening no more. All right, ver, ver, li, li, verse, verse 1 of chapter 3. Li, listen it. I am the man who has seen affliction by the rod of his wrath. I was going to just stand and read this chapter 
from three different tr translations, but I won't do that. That'll take too much time to get to the preaching verse because the Living Bible translation uh, speaks more clarity on it, and then the Message Bible translation uh, even adds on to uh, the uh, emphasis of each particular word that is uh, recorded here. So if you have those translations in your uh, smartphones and pads, uh, the next time, you're not going to do it today, the next time you're feeling bad about what you done, not what, this is not suffering that's brought on because she hadn't done nothing. Yeah, wave your hand. Wave your hand. This is not about uh, somebody picking on you because you uh, are a smart child. This is stuff you did. The laments, the lamentations, the cries. All right. uh, verse 2. He has led me and made me walk in darkness and not in light. Now he is, he's, listen at it. Uh, surely he has turned his hand against me and time and time again throughout the day. Now he's talking about God now. That's, that's his, he, he's feeling so bad. That's how he's feeling about God. You ever been in such a bind, in such a mess, that you felt like God wasn't there? Yeah. He has aged my flesh. In other words, uh, Deacon Brothers, Deacon Trotman, Trotman myself, and uh, who else? Any other old men in here? Oh, uh, uh, Deacon Sam? Old men. I said, oh, men. Oh, uh, uh, Brother Freddy. Oh, men. Y'all, y'all, look, we know what it means to be old. Especially if you wake up late, you can't find stuff. And you already laid it out and you still can't put it together. I woke up the other morning, I think it was uh, Friday morning. Yeah, Friday morning at. Um, for the services of John Friday morning, and I was so discombobulated, and my body did not feel normal till around three o'clock that afternoon. That's what age do to you. <laughs> you young folk got something to look forward to. Uh, Age does that to you. Now enjoy your young life and live all you can do because the alternatives to not getting old and feeling this way is dying young. So I take getting old. That's a better alternative. He has aged me. He has broken my bones. I'm feeble. I don't jump and move as fast. He has, look, he has besieged me. And one of the translations, I think it's the uh, Living Bible, says he has locked me up. And he won't let me out. I am surrounded by bitterness and woe. You know, when you, when you feel bad about what you've done, that's how you, you, nothing looks good, nothing feels good, nothing sounds good, nothing goes good. He has set me Look, verse 6, he has set me in dark places like the dead of long ago. He has hedged me in so that I cannot get out. He has made my chain heavy. Even when I cry and shout, he shuts out my prayer. He has blocked my ways with stones. He has made my paths crooked. He has been to me like a bear lying in wait, like a lion ambush. Boy, when it really gets bad, whew. Uh, he has been to me, I'm sorry, he has turned aside my ways. He has torn me in pieces. He has made me desolate. I, uh, he has uh, bent his bow and set me up as a Target for the arrows. 
I, I don't know how bad you can feel. I, when you feel like God has, has put a bull uh, mark, a circle, that bull mark on you, and everything that could go wrong, or everybody that could attack you, they are attacking you. He has caused the arrows of his quiver to pierce my lungs. I have become the ridicule of all of my people. You know, when you mess up and then it becomes public. Everybody knows about it. And they are laughing at you and talking about you. And they are telling you how stupid you are. And how dumb you look. Now, you know that's what they do. It's happening now. Uh, our city state's attorney is not in a good position right now. And I'm not going no further. And, and that taunting song all day long has filled me with bitterness. And look, at a point in time, you know, you not only feel bad, but you get Verse 16. I'm almost preaching. I'm almost coming to it. He has, I'm, he has broken my teeth with gravel. Us old folk know what that means. Uh, you know, as you age. He has covered me with ashes. You have moved my soul far from peace. There is, when you feel that bad, there is nothing and in no place where you can just, you just want to sit down and just get quiet. Yeah. Sure, you, you're in your favorite chair and ain't nothing on, but your, your soul is disturbed. Yeah. Yeah. And here's, here's the part, uh, Diane, that, that really slaps you in the face. Uh... I have forgotten prosperity. In other words, uh, you in such a miserable state that you ain't thinking about no money. You just hurting so bad. Uh, James Avon, you ain't invested in no stock. And I see it. Now here, look, 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 look. That's his, that's his lament. That's his, that's him crying out. And I said, my strength and my hope have perished. Look at look 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 at your look at your translation. My strength have perished from the Lord. Now, uh, some of us have been in that position. Maybe even now. To where we got feeling so bad that we blamed or looked at God as the reason why this is going on. This is Jeremiah. He's known as a weeping prophet. And if you turn over to chapter 33 of Jeremiah, God told Jeremiah to go down and buy a field that uh, was a part of his family line. Jeremiah had no interest in buying the field. He bought the field. And when he bought the field, God let the enemy come in and take what he had spent his last dime on. And then Jeremiah goes back to God and says, God, why did you let this happen to me? Well, well, yeah. And listen, Susan, listen what God said. Because I am the Lord. Yeah. Now I come today to tell you, I know it's been rough. It's rough right now. And, and a lot of the roughness that you're feeling and experiencing is not because 
of what somebody else has done is not because of COVID, is not because of rising prices and low wages, is not because of the hustle side of you, it's because And when you look to God and talk to God about it, you feel like he is at fault and he has abandoned you. Oh, but it doesn't stop there. Now let me get to the preaching verse. Look at the preaching verse. Verse 19. Now I'm going to spend a little time on these next two or three verses. Verse 19. Remember my affliction and roaming. The warm word and the gall. My, now here it is. My soul. Oh, y'all should have shot it there. I remember the st stuff I did to get me in the position I'm in. I remember what I did. I remember when I sneaked out. I remember when I dipped and dabbed. I remember when I jumped over the fence when the grass looked greener. I remember how ill-advised I was on the choices and the decisions I made. I remember. Ah. Oh. And then drop down to verse 21. Come on, Aunt Sandra. Get down to verse 21. Time to get happy. We've been crying now for 20 minutes in this sermon. Time to get happy. I said it's time to get happy. It's time to get happy. Ah, This I recall to my mind. And therefore I have hope. Oh! No! Yeah, I did some stuff I ain't got no business, had no business doing. I involved myself in things that I never should have been involved in. I said things, I tested things, but this I recall. And my my soul, Rodney, my soul, it may not look too good around me, but my soul has hope. Now that's what you got to, Bobby Jean, that's what we got to search for in our times that we're living. Things are so messed up, America is in a hell of a position. And she's in a hell of a position, not because of Russia, not because of Afghanistan, not because of Iraq, not because of Israel. She's in trouble because of the decisions she has made. As our dear brother Malcolm said, the roosters have come home to roost. But I have hope, not in the White House, I have hope that, 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 look, that, that's the settling point. All right, let me, let me, let me bring it in. Look at verse 22. Through the Lord's mercy. We talked about that last week. And let me just remind you of what we defined as mercy. Mercy is God's inexhaustible and infinite compassion which he demonstrates to everyone who's hurting. Inexhaustible, it never runs out. It never loses its power. It never diminishes its effectiveness. Whenever mercy is needed and it shows up, it's always adequate. Ah, ain't that good news? Oh, 
always. All right, all right. That's that, that, that just the beginning. I'm glad you're getting happy with me. Uh, uh, Jeremiah, in the midst of crying, picture this, this strong prophet. Trotman, he ain't too well polished. He's not dressed in the in designer clothes. Everybody knows that all he do is go around crying. In fact, it got so bad on him one while, James Avon, he said to the people, well, really he was talking to God uh, about God's people. He said, I'm tired of y'all. I'm tired of y'all. I'm not thrilled about what God has, has assigned me to do. And I'm looking for me a spot. Anybody ever look for a place somewhere out where ain't nobody around? Nobody can get to you. Nobody can ask you nothing. You you look for a spot. You, you want to retire from everything. You want to quit everything. You don't want no phones. You don't want no texts. You don't want to be bothered. Not only by people, you don't even want to hear from God. You just want to find your spot. No! Jeremiah said, I sit down in my chair and I was rocking and chilling. And I didn't bother nobody, didn't hear nothing from nobody. He said, but oh! 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 Something happened. Wasn't expecting it. Wasn't looking for it. Didn't want it. Fire. It was like fire. Shut up in my bones. Ah. Uh, it, it goes, I'm, 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 I'm almost finished. It goes like this. You, you decide. You determine that you're not going to do. You're not going to say. Go be, you're not go see, go play, Drums. you're not go play the instruments, you're not go be here for media, you're not go set up the chairs, you're not go serve as an usher, you're not go be in missions, you're not go do evangelism, you're not go come on the prayer team, you're not go do nothing. No! Oh! No! Oh! No! Oh! And then all of a sudden, something happens. And you, you get the Kate Hepits. You know what the Kate Hepits is? Sam, I what? You don't tell nobody. All right. I'm sorry. Let me, let me get to the, let me get to the pre. Here, here, here's the preaching verse. The Lord's mercies. Look at the last portion. Because of his mercy, that we wasn't consumed. Oh, through many dangers, seen and unseen. Oh, oh. He has already brought us if it had not been for the Lord on our side. Now let me tell you this. Now don't you get too caught up in yourself. Especially those of us who done passed 50. Because when you pass 50, the, what you did at 30 ain't interested. It just ain't that exciting. And then if you get lucky enough to get past 60, you ain't interested in nothing but getting back home and grabbing you a little bit to eat and watching your favorite TV show. 
And just because you don't have the shake, rattle, and roll desire no more, and just because you ain't been dibbling and dabbling no more, it ain't because you don't want to, it's because you can't. And so, don't you, and you, you can't because you've learned, you've learned that that doesn't pay off. That the dividends of that actions is really not worth all the hell and the headaches you put yourself through. Don't you dare look with critical, condemning, judgmental eyes upon that pet traffic that's coming through where you done came out of. His mercies kept you. You and I was out there uh, in the darkness of night when it was actually midday, but it felt like midnight. And we were doing our thing. And danger was all around us. Not only was bullets flying, evil was flying. And God had a protective shield that kept us. We're not consumed. We look, look, look. Now, now don't you think you got you didn't get away. You just wasn't consumed. God didn't take you out. He let, he let some of what you did that you should not have done, he let you feel the repercussions of poor choices. But he didn't consume you. That's mercy. That's mercy. Mercy is you don't get everything you deserve. All right, let, look, look, verse 23. Verse 23. Look, you got it. No, no, I'm sorry, the latter portion of verse 22. You got mercy, we're not consumed, and then look, because of his compassions, they fail not. That, that, uh, uh, a torn, a John, rather, uh, it means that, that God deals with us in a very tender manner even when he put the squeeze on us. The psalmist said it this way, God has not dealt with me according to my sins and he has not rewarded me according to my iniquities. I got just the opposite of what I deserve. Not only did he give me mercy, not only did he not consume me, but he blessed me in the process. Passion. And notice, I'm talking about God. I ain't talking about us. Because how we show mercy and compassion, it, there is no compa that, No, there is no comparison. His compassions <sighs> fail not. You ever been in a position where you needed your friend? Or your loved one to show you some compassion. And all they did, they either investigated what was going on or they condemned you for what had happened. We're going to be uh, sometime in the spring. I don't know. And I'm praying about this, but I want to do this as God leads. Sometime in the spring, we're going to start a children's church so that they can be talked to about God on their level. Now, I know I miss that every Sunday. I don't do that. I apologize to all young people and parents. And I will, they, because I, there are some things I want to say that I can't say because I don't want to uh, mess up our children. 
Y'all get the message. Sometime in the spring, we're going to start that. They'll, they'll be with us, and then they'll go out, and they'll get talked to. His compassions fail not. And then look at verse 23. And, and Patricia Gaither is sitting over there, but she's about ready to leave because this is one of her favorite passages. Throughout the year, I've heard her uh, mention this passage. I heard her mention this passage not once, but several times. They are new evermore. Not every black folk, when it, when it showing up means something, we say, ever morning. Uh, whatever you got yesterday uh, from God, that was good, but it's fresh today. Oh, think about it. I was sharing with uh, some colleagues of mine. I said, man, I'm home more. I'm not doing nothing. I'm pretty much chill mode. I said, I'm praying more. I said, but when I pray, I'm still faced with the reality of my shortcomings and my inec my troubling. I don't understand it. You can be in the house 24 hours, not go outside. Still a mess. Still a mess. Ain't done nothing but you're still a mess. And that's why you need freshness. You need, you need the freshness of God's mercies every day. And I'm, 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 I'm getting ready to park it. And then look at ver the light. Look, they're new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Look, 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 look. Look. You, you, you know what salt does? Not only is it salty. But if you take your finger and dip it in a little salt, you know the next thing you're going to be looking for? Salt, salt activates something within your body that says you got to drink something. And when you get God's mercy and God's grace and God's faithfulness, when you experience that every morning, what happens? It makes you desire more of him. You say, I, I need something every day. Great is the faithfulness. God won't change on us even though we are changing and denying and ignoring and and disavowing the things that he wants us to do. God, not only God, And he remains faithful. And Deacon Broderick, God's faithfulness has an entity that is not only human related, but he's faithful to himself and what he requires. Oh, you missed that. I said you missed that. That, that God is not only faithful to us when we are unfaithful to him, but when he's is not weakened. God remains faithful to himself.
Him wide. Oh, 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 the faithfulness of God at around three that afternoon. for a parent uh, to turn away from their child. His faithfulness. You can depend on him. In the time of need, in the time of suffering. Oh. Come on, Grace. 